Hi everybody and welcome yet again to another one of our videos here at Sawdust U on upgrading your table saw. Uh, in the earlier videos we went through the um, layout and building of the sliding table and this next couple of videos are going to be on this fence. Um, I can't tell you how nice it is to have a fence like this. I tried to incorporate um, basically the components that I liked about all the fences I've used over the years and to incorporate them into this. And once again, like the um, sliding table, the core of this whole system involved these CNC components that I um, checked out at a, at a CNC uh, exhibit at a woodworking show. This is the heart of the whole system. It's a 20 millimeter hardened steel chrome rail that mounts on a um, extruded aluminum base. Now, once again, the nice thing about it, these these come assembled like this. So what I'm going to do here is separate this up and, and show you how it works. Now, you can see, one of the things I hope you can see from that angle is how nice it is the way this fence just locks place with a single finger. You're not, you don't have to muscle it into the closed position. Once it snaps past 90 degrees, it locks in place. And the reason for that is there are two clamps front and rear. Slide that off. The head, as you can see, comes off. It's quite heavy. It's a nice piece of two inch by three inch, quarter inch thick wall, 10, 60, or 60, 61 um, T6 extruded aluminum, aircraft quality, beautiful unit. And what we've got here is we've got a stainless steel post here. You can hear the little spring go there. And here's another one here at this end. And when you drop the handle down, there's a cable system in here. Its system is too strong of a word. It, it makes it sound too complicated. It's a simple method. The cable pulls directly on the one on the end and comes to the handle, a little plate on the handle. The one here goes around a center post and then back to the handle. So you pull both. It's like reins on a horse. You pull both reins, if you will. Uh, my wife is a horse person. She'll love that analogy. Um, so when you lock it down, you're pulling back on those things and you have even tension on both. It's adjustable here on the end so that they clamp at exactly the same point and exactly the same pressure. So once you move it back and forth and you get it aligned, you lock it in place, bingo, you're done. It's a real nice system. And then of course the other key to the system is holding it parallel. And that's where these rails come in. You can see um, what we've got here. Um, this is a little cursor that I'm going to install here on my Lexan um, cover here over my, uh, I have a Sterrett self-adhesive um, scale here. And uh, the nice thing about this, you can see how easily that slides. Now these are quite heavy and you can see I can easily move that back and forth with one finger. And the nice thing about it is because you can rest your hand like this and I can move that back and forth. I can get that within a hundredth of an inch so easy to make your hair stand on end. It's a real, real nice accurate system. So the fence head itself we'll deal with in the next video because as I said I've got a little wood mock-up done here and I'll show you guys how I did that. So I'm going to slide this out of the way through the guide rails and off and we'll get to the the base of the system here. Now once again don't get too hung up on what I've got here because you can design yours any way you want. You can have it go, uh, you could have your, like for example on my Powermatic, I had the uh, side table came out to about here. I had these about 14 or 16 inches on, on center, I can't remember which, and uh, correspondingly wider dust shield on them, once again to hold those two um, uh, rails parallel. Now the only trick here, uh, this obviously is important, you want to take some time to do this right, um, because this these are much closer together than they are on the um, sliding table, so the degree of accuracy is important to maintain that parallel feed of your of the two sliding rails. So uh, I mentioned in the earlier video when talking about the sliding table, the only fly in my ointment that I found for these guide blocks, and I, you probably can't see them in your camera there, but you will be able to see them if you go to my website on the close-ups. I've got a, you can see the ball bearings in there; they're beautiful is the four holes that attach each of these to the base are not quite perfectly aligned. And so it became problematic how to um, get those, um, the holes on the back of these guide blocks perfectly aligned with my plywood base here. This is three quarter inch cabinet grade plywood, no voids in the 
uh, interior veneers and uh, very nice and strong. Now, so basically what I did is I took my calipers and I measured the um, width of the base of my guide blocks. And it looks, I'm, I'm going to guess here, it's, it's, it was metric, of course, but it's about one and three quarters inches. Um, what I did was transfer those marks to my plywood base using the best pencil you've got on your repertoire, which is that right there, a razor knife. Uh, you can never duplicate the sharp edge of a knife. And the added advantage when you use it to score uh, plywood uh, to make a mark rather than a pencil line is you're breaking the fibers for the top layer of that veneer and you get a nice clean edge. So it's a real nice, it's a double way to go. Best, best pencil you've got. So then what you do is you move your marks for the width of your guide box. It doesn't matter particularly what this distance is here. Could be, if you had a real long, say you had a 48 inch long rail, you might want to have those 8 inches apart. You may want to make them 14, 16, 18, whatever you want width wise. Um, doesn't make any difference. It just depends. It does make a difference in the sense that the, relative to the stroke you have and the weight you're moving, you want to uh, uh, make these accordingly uh, sized. Um, so you've got your marks on your plywood. In my case, I have a dado blade set up on a radial arm saw, which I like because I can watch the progress of the cut as I make it through the uh, plywood. Uh, you could do it on a table saw too, you just aren't seeing what you're cutting. So I, I take this around, take it over to my uh, radial arm saw. I put a new fresh fence in so that when I put a test cut through on the dado blade, it puts it perfectly spaced, in my case, 13, 16 inch sp um, groove in my fence so when I line my marks up I know exactly where that line has to line up to get a clean cut. In spite of that even though I know it's dead on I always cut inward of the line a little bit make my major cut and then I move it back accordingly maybe a sixteenth of an inch a thirty second of an inch whatever it might be and then when I cut my final pass I'm only taking that appropriate amount a sixteenth or a thirty second of an inch off of the plywood. It makes a nice clean cut and I'm, there's no risk of me hitting um, a flaw in the plywood uh, and pulling the uh, dado blade slightly out of alignment. Do that front and rear on both sides and you've got two basically channels that will hold your guide blocks. Now I mentioned this in the video on the sliding table but for those of you that didn't uh, watch that or, or don't want to build a sliding table I'll go over it here briefly. Um, these are acorn nuts. You can see they got a little point on them and uh, what I did was, these are six millimeter, is I got four of these from my local hardware store and I took my guide blocks, screwed these into the holes and then I used to put a block here, nice plain square edge block, clamped it in place there so it was flush with the face of my little channel. I then take my acorn nuts that are screwed into the base of my guide block and I press the guide block down and put a little pressure on it and I'll leave four dimples where these tips press into the plywood. Do that for all four. They're all labeled one, two, three, four. They have arrows on them pointing front and rear so I keep them aligned. Doesn't do any good to have a precision alignment of irregular holes and then if you accidentally rotate it 180 degrees or switch one and four, or three and two, whatever it might be. So mark them, keep them aligned just like on cabinet maker marks. You can even put one line there, one, two lines there, etc. Uh, however you do it, but just keep track of the direction you're going and the, their location on your base. Pressure your marks down, get your dimples, take it over your uh, drill press, drill your four holes for each one. I mentioned this also on the sliding table thing. These guide blocks also have adjustment screws, one on the bottom and one on the side. You can't see them here, they're on the inside. Um, that you can use to tighten the hardened steel tube that the rail slides in. So when you first are setting it up, you want to be sure to take your one of your rails, you can use the full ones, not just this little scrap, and you put it through like that and you, you check how it feels to you, how it sounds to you. Is there any play in it? You don't want any play, but you don't want it cranked down too hard either. You want it just snug so it kisses it and has total control. So you can just hear that, how nice it is. Beautiful, I love it. Um, once you adjust that and you put a little uh, uh, slow curing uh, lock thread on it, um, you, can, you can tighten those down to where you want them and then they'll dry and they'll lock it in place and you're, you're good to go. So um, the other thing I did is after you get this on, you can put your rail assembly on 
and we'll mount the uh, fence to it here in a second and um, show you how to align that. It also is worth mentioning, you can see here I got two half inch bolts that when this whole system is together, I don't normally take the head off obviously and the, the rails. I just take these two nuts off of the back of this and the whole assembly lifts off in one piece and I can put it back on. I put my two uh, bolts through the holes, uh, very tight tolerances. Double check it with alignment with the fence with a uh, miter slot hole gauge um, groove and lock it in place and I know I'm good to go. Takes about as much time as uh, changing a saw blade. Well worth it if you have to do it. For me, 99% of the time I just leave the assemblage on it works like a charm. So I'll go ahead and end this video. We'll come back and we'll show you how to attach the rails to the fence and then we'll do a little video on the fence itself. So thanks a lot. Stay tuned.